Hi there, tech people. I'm your host, Sean Worker of Adapter Tech X, where we explore the business trends and fads of travel, tourism, hospitality, retail, restaurants, and the service industry. Today, we are joined by Matteo Gadini of Brera. He's an entrepreneur, an angel investor, co-founder of Brera Service Departments, 400 plus apartments and boutique hotels, and is a interesting, interesting guy about how he thinks about problems, atomic steps, and how to get from here to there with sensible tech. It's a pleasure to have him. And also would like to call out to our friends at Hunter Gatherer for producing the show and powering it on a weekly basis. And to our friends at No Vacancy with Glenn Hausman, who's uh, clocking well close to 600 shows and connects us with what's going on in the United States. So with that, over to Matteo. Welcome, Matteo, back to, back for the long form. And uh, we just got started on the quick hit form. I mean, it was actually, you were sharing so much. I, I, I felt I was pressing you uh, in, in that. A lot, lot of great advice. I mean, when we came off the show um, a few minutes ago, you had some great advice for uh, the owners in particular uh, in, in how you think about tech stacks and buy versus build and, you know, start with the end in mind. I have a big issue generally with people building tech stacks. And sometimes there's not a real architectural plan in place. It seems like you had that in place. You had a vision for it. Yeah, well, I, you know, many times you get lost in all the features, right? That's that's one thing that uh, is, is, is so compelling. You have products that can do a lot of things that can sort of, you know, that lure you into uh, adopting them. Um, and, uh, and, and then you're there with a stack of things that aren't really serving your customer. Um, and so, I mean, we started really going long and, and, and deep on tech around four years ago. Um, and by then we were already operational for six years. So we had a very good understanding of, you know, what we wanted our product to look like, what our guests value and not value. Um, and, and we built on that. Um, and I think one, one thing that is really hard uh, is to say no. Mm -hmm. yeah, during the years, we've been there for 10 years now. And um, at the beginning, we were really, we started with a product that was com completely stripped down of basically all the services, all the features and everything. And then we started to add blocks one at, one at a time. And we very quickly realized that housekeeping, for example, was something that everyone wanted. Uh, so it was very quickly part of our, you know, basic offering. Uh, and we did that with a lot of things. Uh, we went so far that we added um, sort of a meal plan uh, where we put in the apartments uh, all the ingredients for the whole week. Uh, and people could grab it and they would be built for it uh, and nobody used it right so we, we went on with these trials and errors and in the end we found out our guests don't need much if, if you're somewhere for three months you get organized um, and so it, sometimes it's harder to say no and to leave out things than 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 to actually embrace new things that you know, are fun. I mean, if you put a cocktail bar in the bay, in the, in the, in the ground floor, it's, it's just fun. It's, it's sexy. Um, it's much more sexy than, you know, putting automatic uh, laundry machine in, in, in the basement. Uh, but sometimes it's just, you know, uh, wiser to say no. And the same thing goes with tech. Uh, you want that people, you know, get into the apartment in an easy way. So you'd have to do that. And, and, Sometimes giving them a state guide is, is a nice to have, but it's not really needed. Yeah, it's interesting when you think about the, the parallels between just good thought leadership. Pick, choose, have a plan, have an arch architectural plan, both for operations and other, and then the features, like you said. When you're, how, how do you share that philosophy with your team? 
in how they make those choices, be it for operational items or for how tech gets funded? Well, one of the one of the key uh, ways we, we 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 lead the team um, is to have very clear priorities. We have you know yearly goal, quarterly rocks, uh, and we you know we we uh, split it down for each uh, for each department and for each area. Um, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. In the end, what really counts is to have a 120% motivated team. And I think this is one of the biggest achievements that I, uh, that I, when I look back, um, that I sort of see in, in, in the company. Um, because everyone in the company is intrinsically motivated. Uh, we managed to empower the team in a way that they act as if they were, you know, it was their own company. And, uh, and this was really hard at the beginning with the first, you know, 10 people, five to 10 people. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, mis mismatch and, you know, people that didn't, you know, weren't used to that mindset or didn't embrace it. Uh, but then it was sort of magic because after you get the 10 people, everyone you add to the team is so influenced by the environment that it's sort of, you know, of course you have to choose the right people, but uh, it sort of um, becomes a, a living creature. We were chatting about this on, on our quick hit. And one of the books that you mentioned was, what was it? Atomic Ideas? Atomic Habits. Yep. Atomic Habits. So. And then you're, of course, you're following up with, you know, germs and steel and totally all different thing, right? yeah, totally different. Right. But let's talk about atomic ideas and, and these, these concepts of habits. When you think about these habits for business owners, what, what are you getting out of that book that you're think, oh, I'm going to apply that, or is that a fad or a trend? Well, I think in, in a nutshell, it's about, you know, reaching excellence in very small steps. And we're all, we're all led to think that, you know, to become excellent, you need to have that epiphany or that moment in which you do a huge leap and you become uh, this better version or you, this self on steroids. Uh, but actually, it really boils down to being very consistent uh, and, you know, doing whatever brings you to, to be excellent, being it exercising, meditating, reading or you know doing anything that you would want to do in business every day for a little bit and and it's this consistency that brings you to to, to an incremental path of growth think about the idea of utilizing that as an atomic step do you meditate do you i mean how do you how do you cope with all the stress and strain of being a owner developer angel investor no, I don't. Uh, you probably would have expected me to say yes. Um, uh, I tried many times and I was just too distracted. Uh, I recognize that could be very good for me, but I, you know, I have, I, I, I run. Um, I try to run every day or every second day. Um, and that is a way for me to mm. sort of, you know, get in the flow and, and meditate. And, and I noticed as soon as I stopped that for a couple of weeks, uh, it like it's incredible how physically, but also mentally, uh, what the negative impact is. Um, I don't that's see it. Yeah. yeah, that's ex it. It is difficult. Um, so what, one of the things that that uh, one of the events when we met, uh, you said we're going to go walk around. Is that something that that you do as a manager? You get everybody Absolutely. to walk golf courses with you? Absolutely. Um, you know. I don't know where I read it, but um, I read that people think through problems. I don't. Uh, sorry, uh, talk through problems and don't think through pro through problems. So the human brain is done in a way that it's much more effective to talk with someone about something and get to a solution than you know mm -hmm. to you know keep thinking about it. Um, and uh, and I find the environment of an office. Uh, sitting on a table, maybe, you know, uh, drinking coffee or, or, or eating chocolate, uh, it's just depressing. 
And if you could do the same thing walking in, in a forest as we did, uh, it helps if it's a sunny day, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's much more inspiring. I mean, I've, I have this thing with nature. I'm, I, I try to be in nature as much as possible. And that's another thing that sort of helps me uh, staying sane. Um, I have this thing with nature that I, you know, uh, mountains, I go, I go uh, touring with skis and, and hiking. And, uh, and so it's something that, you know, I, I need to feel this connection to be at my best. Um, and I don't know if it's just me or if it's uh, the same for everyone, but I am at my best when I'm, you know, walking in the forest. So speaking about walking, you know, a weird tangent is when you're thinking about how you get your organization to be thoughtful and also strive for efficiency. What, what current tech or new tech or new tools that you believe you'll bring into the business to, you know, help with inflation, supply chain issues, labor issues. What have you done differently in the last few months that you hadn't even dreamed that you would do before? I don't think it's a particular piece of tech, uh, even if we did implement uh, some new new pieces. I think it's more of a philosophical thing. Um, so, as I said in the in the in the quick uh, um, in the quick version, uh, the problem we set out to solve at the beginning was, you know, giving business travelers a way to stay for a, an extended period that was comfortable, private, and accessible. Um, and now things are changing. So uh, the problem is that the market is too fragmented. There's too many different products and there's inconsistency out there. Um, well, even, the, even the most successful uh, concepts like Airbnb have this intrinsic problem that when you book, you don't know what to expect. You don't know if it's gonna be a, you know someone uh, host there for you or not, if it's going to be a professional place or not, if it's going to be a decent place or not. I mean, you can see the pictures, but, um, uh, and so I think there's, there's need to give customers and to give guests this ease of booking, this ease of access, and also the feeling that they know what, what they get. Right. And, um, we started recognizing the power that our tech stack and our scale has. Um, and what we're trying to do now, uh, and we have the first, uh, the first pilots, um, is to you know, give all the other small players access to our tech stack and to our economies of scale so that it profits them because you know, I've, been, I've been a small player with one, with one facility. You have two options, either you're, let's say, unprofessional, like you're, you're doing a very, you know, handcrafted thing, everything manual with no software, with no, uh, 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 no systems, uh, no processes. And so you keep your costs low, but you're leaving money on the table, right? Because you're not yielding, you're not doing anything that is sort of a bit more complex. Or you're super professional, super, um, you know, um, uh, digitalized and you're yielding and you're doing everything right, but you don't have enough apartments where you can uh, divide your costs. Uh, and so your cost per apartment is exorbitant. Um, and so we're trying to help them in this situation. And of course, we get the benefit to give our customers the experience of staying with friends uh, and, and staying at Brera in, in, in more uh, locations than we could now if we would grow organically. So you've scaled here. The idea of scaling is, is challenging. If I might introduce some alternatives and get your reaction to that, um, you're spending a lot of time on user experience and differentiating in user experience with a solid back office and then scaling that. There's products coming on the market today that are super affordable and integrate all that. You know, if you look at Apaleo, that has an open API platform, uh, Muse, somewhat similar products like Magic coming out of Switzerland that that um, have super agile um, employee and user experience flows that are fairly inexpensive. Is that something you would think of using or is that something that says, 
not for me? Or are you, where's that next iteration of what you're saying uh, in, in the marketplace? Look, we're adding new products to our st tech stack constantly. Uh, mm. The last bit we did, we did was, uh, which was, by the way, very um, important uh, in the choice of our PMS, because not every PMS can dock with, uh, with the revenue management. Uh, so we, we, we introduced ideas uh, for revenue management. Um, mm. And uh, we hope through ideas to make our short stay component more relevant and to yield much more on, on the short stay front and on the long stay front as well. Um, so this is something that is, uh, you know, uh, we have more ideas than capacity. We, we, we're also very focused on, on the implementation of our, of our IT roadmap. Uh, we do one thing at a time, uh, and we try to do that right. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, the next steps are, are all, uh, are all there, all laid, laid out, uh, and, um, we'll tackle, we'll tackle one at a time. But it's interesting that you're also going down the platform model, right? Where you're co-opting and extending your and leveraging your existing platform to many others who, like you said, don't have the, the, the they have the need, but they don't probably have the resources and time to be able to, um, you know, plug into a program as, as complex as yours. So that's, you know, that's an interesting next phase. So I guess you're going to be the next Apaleo or the next Muse or somebody. I mean, wherever you're going with this, you know, it should be interesting. So yeah, well, I mean, we understand us not as a software as a service. Yes. More like a process as a service, right? Mm. So we not only put the infrastructure uh, for you know we we, make, we don't only make the, the the software infrastructure available to our to our customer in this in this uh, in this sense, which is basically our competitor, the the the, the, the private competitors. Um, but we um, but we give them also the process that is behind it. So we operate that soft the software. We take the calls uh, of their of their guests. We uh, manage their bookings. We manage their check ins. We manage the, manage their checkouts. We uh, um, we check that the rates that the rate uh, um, that the revenue management tool. Um, spits out are are good and uh, so we th th there's more than just the software so you actually are doing a lot more i mean uh, uh, do you think the market knows about that i mean you're you're doing it basically all their back office and some of their front office work exactly and i mean we're 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 piloting now uh in the service department space uh so we didn't go out with a major marketing message because we want to you know uh, get some pilot customers and you know be very open to them that this is uh, you know something that is new for us as well and and uh, you know develop together with them the the right thing uh, but this is something we're really enthusiastic about um, I mean if you look at the market you have very asset light and very asset heavy players or motors right the very asset light you start from as I said Airbnb home like but also the you know, also the local like home, like Punda Flats and so on, um, which have an enormous um, uh, scaling ability because you just, you know, it, it's, it, you don't need to do anything to scale. People just post their apartment on your platform. But then, I mean, it's a really a winner takes it all play, right? So either you're Airbnb or maybe number two or three, or you're basically nobody or maybe have a small niche, but I mean, in general, it's a winner takes it all. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the very asset heavy thing where the competition is completely different. I mean, you don't have global competition. You don't even have local competition. If you have a hotel or a service apartment facility in Munich, you're definitely not competing with another one in Berlin, but you may not even competing be competing with another one in Munich. I mean, you're really competing with the location uh, mm -hmm. other players. Um, and so these have opposite uh, pros and cons. Uh, and I think this, this idea of, uh, of, of the process as a service is a bit in between, right? I mean, you have a, a local component that you're relevant in your, in your local neighborhood, but you also have something that is applicable to 
to a lot of different realities and can scale quicker. You don't need to, you know, build a building or negotiate a, a lease which takes six months. Uh, you don't have to go into a binding lease payment for the next 20 years. Um, so we, uh, we're very optimistic on this. And so you got two customers, you got your user and your user, you got a user as a, you know, B2C customer, and then you got your supplier as a customer. Um, same question, two different lenses. Um, do you, do you think these users value what you're doing right now and place a value on that and pick whichever side, the customer side or the supplier side, supplier side as a customer, whichever wherever you want to start with. So the that. customer side is the guest that in the end walk into our apartment and, and, and sleep in our apartment. And uh, they definitely see the value because, I mean, we've been... Uh, we've been comparing our numbers with the numbers of competitors and hotels throughout the last <clears throat> years, but especially during the pandemic. Uh, and, you know, uh, during the, the bad phases of the pandemic, hotels had 5%, we had 60, uh, and that was the worst we got, 60% uh, occupancy. Um, and uh, even now, I mean, if we compare ourselves with our competitors, same, same, like service apartment competitors, we sometimes get revenue that are two times, three times, uh, what I get. So, um, so I think there is a huge demand for service apartment and, 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 and we're doing something right as Brera. Um, but, uh, and on the. On the supplier side, so when our customers are other service apartment facilities that we want to help with our technology and our processes in order to serve their customers best, uh, I think that's exactly the same thing. I mean, as long as the customer, the end customer, the, the, the guest is happy and they can be happy in our facility or in their facility, then we're all happy. We're all, uh, we're all here to serve them. Um, we're not there yet at a stage that, uh, that that I can prove it. But, you know, we do a lot of work in user experience and the table stakes for a fluid, seamless user experience for the average person or the average company booking on, say, your platform or anybody else's platform is expected that it's fluid, simple, with zero defects. Is 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 that the new value statement that it has to be that good to be valued where you have no problems? There's things that you have to do, uh, completely seamless, completely no problems uh, and so on. But there's also something on top, right? I mean, don't forget that our customers are usually traveling for months. Uh, so it's a bit like a relocation. Uh, I read somewhere that one of the you know the biggest stresses in life are hospitalization and uh, moving homes, right? I, uh, I, think, I think divorce is right up there with yeah, it. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, um, and um, you know, moving to another place for three months isn't a, you know isn't a complete Trust. move, but it's sort of a you know maybe a 30 40 percent move. Uh, so it's very stressful, and um, and we do make it a, a very important uh, part of our offering to be there for them, you know, to have this empathic and, and welcoming uh, touch uh, that our hosts are great at. Um, and, uh, and I think that goes a bit, you know, beyond, beyond uh, the mere. But, it, you know, I mean, in today's world, I mean, if you and I go in somewhere, you know, we expect to be able to solve some basic, fairly basic and now more complex problem on your device. And, you know, is, is, is that part of, you know, the process as a service that it can be, doesn't always have to call somebody. You can, a lot of people don't want to talk to someone. So do you, do you have that facility in, in your, in your, Absolutely. Office? it's called the remote host. Okay. Um, so it's not virtual. It's a remote. That means that you still have the, the ability in the app to have a video call with uh, somebody. Exactly. If you, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're outside of the, of the building, you don't know how to get in. So you do the video call. The host is probably not in that building. It's not, at the, he's not at the, or she is not at the reception. He's maybe in another city, uh, but it's, you know, one of our team. And he's telling you, okay, you're in Frankfurt. The, the, there's a pin code in the building, uh, right? Tip, I don't know, one, two, three, four. 
Then you get in. On the right-hand side, there is a, a, a screen where you have to put in your name and you get a card. And I mean, it, it solves 90% of the problems remotely, but with this sort of, you know, uh, helping hand. Uh, and all the, the is things that, that through an are, app or is that through WhatsApp yeah. or one of the, it's through, it's through your app. So we're trying, I mean, it's, it's, it's now WhatsApp. We're trying to, you know, bundle everything, uh, in the same app that allows you to get in and to get your check-in and, and check out. Excellent. Excellent. And then on your supplier side, how do you provide tech support? You provide operation support is, is that in the same vein where you're talking to a host or your Exactly. Yeah, I mean, for for a um, for a guest, there's basically no difference. Uh, they still, if they have a problem and it's a Brera facility, they use this this system. If it's another facility, they use the same system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have different modules. Uh, we offer either only the revenue side, where we you know we do yield management, we do reservations, and I mean, we for us it's very important that we can. Uh, deal with any uh, request within 10 minutes um, and, and and that's really crucial uh, so we have this cut this promise also for for our suppliers or for our uh, corporate customers um, so that's excellent leveraging leveraging these concepts so just changing a little bit now there's always somebody behind the scenes who is responsible for making all this thing happen so do you have a CIO do you have a CTO do you have a head of technology What's the sort of title that exists in your organization? Then I we do. I mean, we're not an organization that is long on titles, uh, but uh, we have a head of technology. We have uh, someone that is responsible for technology. And so in today's world, uh, what do you think are the, the traits that you expect from your leader of technology that others could learn from? Traits, behaviors, thoughts, you know, what, what is the right profile? of a leader of IT in an organization like today? Uh, um, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's very difficult because he or she needs to have very conflicting traits, right? So on the one hand, you need to be, you know, in, in IT, you need to be uh, precise, think about all the possible, you know, problems and flaws and uh, features and so on. But actually you want a visioner. You want someone that, has this end in mind that we were discussing before that has this uh, vision of how the every step of the of the customer journey or of the or of the team member journey mm -hmm. should look like uh, and then start from there and you know look for the products that, that bring you there instead of merely looking for products that have some features and, and and don't have other features and and um, so I think that and how, how do you how do you find out what their biases are you know they their history and they have biases towards certain platforms and they have products or or apps or infrastructure um, you know how do you work through those biases so that it's clean for you. You mean the basis of the, of the CTO? Yeah. Or the systems? Uh, the CTO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, more a, it's more an art than a science. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> when we hire, we have a very, you know, extensive process. The last person we hired went through, I think, 20 interviews oh. uh, because we want you know, skills are one thing, but personality is, is the main thing. And, and so the, the, the person that we hired was going to be head of operations. And, and so he went through interviews with almost every host and house managers that we have in, in the properties, uh, because they, the, 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 the idea is that they select their leader. Um, and um, with, with the CTO is, is probably the same thing with the users, right? I mean, uh, the user of, of the system need to make sure that this person understands them. They're very, very uh, outcome focused, right? Yeah. That's fascinating. So as we, as we begin to wrap up our, our chat <clears throat> and you're looking forward, so now we're looking in, let's say 18 months, two years into the future, what sort of trends in technology and processes do you think are, 
have got merits or what problems do you see in the future that you think can be solved with technology or you know what do you see in when it comes to risk management as the ceo and founder of brera and as an angel investor as a developer i mean lots on your plate to filter through um what do you see well i think one thought that is um you know mm, <laughs> worrying everyone now is how is go- how is the world going to look like after after these three years where we you know completely change our habits um and i'm talking about the pandemic and maybe even about the war i mean uh, it's not the, f- the the first time there's a pandemic or the first time there is a war but uh, this is going to change a lot of mm-hmm. what we do and and this, these are two things that uh, are going to accelerate a very strong ESG trend that was already there, um, both in terms of you know prices that are rising and energy uh, consumption and so on. Uh, so the, the main question is how how are people going to travel in the future, and are people going to travel in the future? Uh, I mean, I could be in Dublin today and having this chat in your. Uh, in your living room, but I'm not, right? I'm in Milan and we're doing it tr- anyway. Um, so how, how are trends changing and are we still going to be relevant? I think that's the main, the main question. And it's, you know, technology is definitely disrupting this. Um, but I'm, I'm convinced that there are things that you can't really, you know, digitalize. Um, that walk in the wood you were talking about before uh, would have been hard in, 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 in a digital world. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably. Not even sure if uh, there's woods in the metaverse uh, yeah. or everything is built well, up. I, I have a feeling that uh, Zuck has uh, had thought about, you know, what sort, what sort of tree are you predisposed to paying for? So probably. I should say. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, you know, this is something that, you know, there's no answer to, and uh, we will see in the next years, but um, it's definitely something that, um, that is, uh, you know, um, in our minds, top of our minds, and, uh, you know. You know, it's, it's uh, you bring up a couple of interesting things there going forward. I mean, the world, the, the paradigm of travel has certainly changed. Like you, you said, I mean, we could do this. Ordinarily, you know, ideally we're, we're, we're drawn to being together, but the other thing is you're drawn to being together. You don't get great ideas just by a structured call. All right. I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have great ideas between 11 and 12, uh, central standard time, and then we'll go on to other ideas. Uh, That's what we look. And I love your, your comments about culture and fit. So capability, fit, culture all the intrinsic values that goes into driving in an organization that, you know, technology may help, but it won't drive. Um, Your points about, you know, I think that defining comment, I think was, you know, your, your notion about uh, process as, as a product, as opposed to software as a service and it's process as a service and, and bringing best practice, a different angle on these things. So, you know, fascinating time. The other thing about the old metaverse is that I'm not too sure if you're aware of it. You can actually get a mortgage on land on the in, in, in the metaverse. So we've now gone digital and have thrown Mark Twain's concept of buy land. They've stopped making it. Well, we've just discovered a whole new land bank. Yeah. So, you know, uh, do you think you're going to have virtual service departments in, um, in the meta- metaverse? <laughs> We're not planning it yet, but uh, it's probably going to be the next uh, the next thing we're, we'll have to wrap our heads around. I'm sure the yield guys like at, over at Ideas are, are um, already thinking about how do I get into that business? So, you know, thanks a million for taking the time, Matteo. I mean, your insights uh, and from a multitude of perspectives will be very helpful to many and probably quite thought provoking, especially about atomic steps. And, you know, that whole notion of, you know, it's one foot in front of the other and you got to have a plan. And that, that, that's been helpful. And that's what we're trying to do on the show is share those thoughts um, as, as we, uh, you know, explore the different sides of, of technology and what influences it. So thanks again, Matteo. I'm g- going to let you go into the green room for a minute and we'll wrap up and we'll have a chat afterwards. So thanks a million for, you know, the thought and time that you put into, uh, you know, the show. And 
a lot of a lot for many to think about. So thank you for the effort and, and sharing so much about your business. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. You know, these interviews, you never know where they go. And, you know, we're delighted at Adapters Tech X to bring it and bring the angle of how technology is an influencer as much as as a product, but equally those nuggets about separation of concepts and looking at problems different ways. Okay, are you a software as a service business, which many are and are doing very well, but bringing in that process as a service is a different angle that there's variations clearly on that theme out there, but I, I think it's worth uh, getting getting connected and watching and following the Brera story when it comes to uh, some innovative ways to take on practical problems. Oftentimes we try and solve the big stuff before we solve the small stuff and that they are in fact atomic steps. So thanks to everybody who is, is tuned in. Thanks again to our friends at Hunter Gather who power and produce this show and our partnership with No Vacancy and Glenn Hausman, who I think he's reaching his over 600 shows now in the United States, and how we connect the dots between the technology in Europe, Middle East, uh, and America, and watch those startups from a whole lot of spaces and bring those stories to you. So thanks again for taking the time. Look us up on all the usual channels, Apple, Google, Spotify, and of course on our YouTube channel at Adapters and uh, Adapters Tech X. So thanks again. I'm Sean Worker, your host, and thanks again. And keep, keep on watching and grab that cup of coffee. Keep learning. Thank you again. <laughs>